Okay folks, in this video I'm going to do an introduction on how to navigate 3D space within Adobe Photoshop. I'm going to start off, I'm going to make myself a new document and I will just do 8.5 by 11 and I'm going to keep the resolution at 72. Whoops, or 71, let's put that back to 72 there. Now typically an 8.5 by 11 document, the preset will be to put a resolution of 300. I'm going to put it down to 72 because when you're using 3D layers, when the final image gets rendered out, it takes a fair amount of time. It takes several minutes to render out the final look of the image. And the more resolution you have, the bigger the document, the longer the render time. So if I were to put this up to 300 uh, PPI for resolution, it would take, yeah, I don't know, for the demos we're doing, it might take up to 20 minutes to render out the final image. It all depends on the processing power inside your computer. So I'm going to do 8.5 by 11 inches, but I'm going to keep the res at 72 just to speed things up. I'm going to hit OK. And there's our new document. Now I'm just going to point out that under Windows here, I'm in my essential or my default Photoshop workspace. And I'm just going to point that out at the moment. I'll come back to that in a minute. And I think the easiest thing to do here is to actually load up a 3D object. Now we can go into the 3D menu here, and Photoshop does have a couple of pre-made uh, geometric objects we can use. If you go to the 3D menu and you select New Mesh from Layer, you can go to Mesh Preset, and I think we're going to grab the Pyramid. Now Adobe is going to come up with a little warning here, I should say Photoshop is going to come up with a little warning here asking if I would like to switch to the 3D workspace. Well as I pointed out earlier I was in the Essentials workspace. I'm going to hit yes to this and you're going to see a couple of windows pop up. It's going to redo your workspace so that you're seeing some of the key 3D palettes. Now if I go up to my window menu, you'll see under workspace, I am now in the 3D workspace. If I want to go back to my default workspace, I can select that. It resets my palettes to the default. But I do want to keep it in 3D because it does pull up some key palettes that you do need when you're doing 3D uh, imaging inside of Photoshop. Now once you start your pyramid, you might be overwhelmed by all the stuff that pops up on the screen. You're going to have extra windows, you're going to see windows that you've never seen before, or see palettes you've never seen before. You're going to have grids and lines and just stuff all over the place. So let, let's see what happened here. Well, you're going to get a 3D pyramid. It's not really going to look 3D at the moment, but trust me, it is. Uh, you're going to get a 3D pyramid on your screen. You're going to get a grid that serves as the theoretical ground plane. And then you're going to get these lines, probably a red line and a blue line indicating specific axes. And we'll get to those in a moment. Up here, you'll get another viewport. And by default, it's probably going to show you the top of the object. We'll come in and sort of deal with that later on. I'm just going to scale it and put it off to the side for the moment. Down over here, I've got my layers palette, and you'll see it is a 3D object on a 3D layer. It's got this little three-dimensional cube indicator here. And then there's all this other stuff that has appeared underneath my layer. We're going to ignore that for now. We'll come back to that later. One thing I do want to point out is there'll be a 3D tab. If I click on that, you're going to get an outline of your 3D scene. This is going to list all the objects in your scene. Uh, the camera, the lights, and all the different textures and surface options that are available in your scene. And we'll come back to all that as well. It's a little overwhelming to take in at once. Again, I just want to kind of give you a tour of all the new things that have popped up uh, on your screen since you created a 3D layer. And then up here, this is pretty important, you should have a properties palette. And this properties palette will change based on the different things you have selected down here in the 3D layer palette. So as I click through these different items, you will see my properties palette change. Right now, I'm going to keep it on scene and the, the properties are going to be for the entire scene, which is kind of all the objects that are on one particular layer. So I'm just going to leave that for now, and we'll come back to this in a minute. So you've got a second viewport up here. You should get your 3D layer palette down here, and then probably up here you'll get your properties palette. So that's probably all new information that you've never seen before in Photoshop. Also, I want to take a look up here at my options bar. 
uh, it'll say 3D mode and you'll see all these little icons. Let me go over what these do. These initially will let you navigate your 3D space. They'll let you orbit around your object, uh, rotate your camera, move your camera, and dolly in and dolly out, push in and push out with your camera. And you can also adjust the zoom of your camera. We'll come back to that another time. But let's just focus on, on these four tools. These are pretty critical. I'm going to go into my 3D layers. Um, into my 3D palette, I should say. I want to make sure that my scene is active, make sure that's highlighted. And I'm going to grab this first. Whoops. You know, I've kind of noticed that <laughs> when I'm dealing with 3D layers in this recent update of Photoshop, uh, that sometimes buttons stick, like I'll be dragging stuff around. See how this is attached to my cursor? It just kind of stuck with me. If I click again, yeah, it should go away. Once in a while, things just stick and drag along with my cursor. Uh, that's probably going to happen a couple of times during this demo. If you just click again or click down into a, a gray area, you will get it off your cursor. So I'm going to go, I'm going to click on this tool right here. This is the Orbit tool. And if I click anywhere kind of on my alpha channel here, click and drag, I will orbit around my scene. And you can see that the pyramid is indeed 3D. Heck, it's even casting a shadow onto the grid there. So theoretically, if I were to angle it like this, you see a little shadow coming off. If I were able to take like a photograph of a tabletop and match the perspective of that table, it would look like this is throwing a shadow onto that table. Next, now let me rotate this over here. Next is your rotate tool or roll 3D camera tool. If you click on that, it rolls the camera. This is like adjusting the pitch of the camera. You, you might get a little uh, seasick uh, if you do this too fast, but this will roll the camera around. The move tool up here, this will move your camera. So if you click and drag around, you'll be moving the ground plane in your point of view. You'll be moving the camera around. And the last icon zooms you in and out. I shouldn't say, well, I shouldn't say zoom. It, t it, it dollies you in and out. Oops, sorry. I just, my phone just beeped. I got a uh, text message there. Let me shut that off. Okay. Go away, you. Thank you. This tool will zoom you in and out. So I can zoom in on my object. I can zoom out on my object. Now, I should note that these are view management tools. You are physically moving your view around the object. I have not moved the object, I have not rotated, nor have I scaled the object. I'm just moving around my pyramid. The pyramid is staying still. Just as I play with these tools, I am moving my view around the pyramid. Okay. If I click on the pyramid, I will activate that object and then I can move the object around. And you'll notice when I move the object or rotate the object, the object moves, but the ground plane stays stationary. If the ground plane is not moving, then I'm not moving my view around the object at all, but I am actually moving that object around. I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna click off the object. You'll see it's deselected. And now I'm going to drag around again. I'm, I'm sort of clicking like where the alpha channel is you know, on, on the grid back here. As I drag around, I'm moving my view. When I click on my object, I will then, I shouldn't say moving my view, I'm rotating my view. When I click on my object, I am then rotating the object. So you just got to, and you know when you click on the object, you get these little tridents and you'll get this bounding box, which I'll talk about in a moment. So you click off the object, it navigates the view. You click on the object and you'll then edit the object. Oh, let's get it over here. There we go. When the object is deselected, again it does the view. Now when I click on the object, I want to point out a couple of things here. When you activate the object, in the middle you will get a trident. And also, as I move around the object, you'll see all these little areas of the bounding box around the object will start to light up. I'm going to come to that in a minute. But as I kind of move my cursor around, these things kind of blink on and off the screen. So I'll explain what those are in a moment. But if you look in the middle of the pyramid, there's a trident. This is a pretty standard looking trident. You see this in a lot of 3D software. Now, at the moment, my trident is a little small, you can actually adjust the scale of the trident so that you can access the points on the trident a little easier. If I put my cursor on the middle here, this middle box, and hold my shift key and drag my cursor up and down or drag my mouse up and down, the trident can get bigger and smaller. And I'm just going to make it a little supersized, a little larger than I would normally have it just for the sake of this demo uh, to make sure you can see everything. 
This trident indicates the three axes relating to 3D space. You have your y-axis, which is the green up and down trident. So you have the red trident, which is the x-axis. And then you have the blue trident, which is the z-axis. That indicates depth. These tridents have all these funny shapes on them. There's like a, a, a point, like an arrowhead at the end of the trident. There's this half arch, not even a half, but maybe like a quarter arch uh, on the trident. And then there's this little like squashed box on the trident. Those indicate what you want to do to the object. For example, if I click on the top of the green trident, when I drag the object around, it goes up and down the y-axis. If I grab the tip of the trident on the blue, it goes down the z-axis. If I grab the red, it does the x-axis. These little arches, these rotate the object along the appropriate axis. So this will rotate on the y, the x, actually, this is rotating. It's attached to the y-axis, but when you rotate it, it's actually rotating on the z-axis. Don't get too concerned about the right letter axes, but the point being is when you click on these, these will spin the object around accordingly. And it's nice because when you roll over it, this little ring lights up. You get this yellow ring that will kind of help you indicate which thing, which direction things are going to roll in or turn in. The box does squash and stretch. If I click on the box in the middle here, it scales the object big and small, makes the object bigger and smaller. But if I grab these little boxes, it will squash it or stretch it accordingly. I'm just going to undo that. If I, I can squash and stretch it this way, undo, and I'm going to squash and stretch on the Z. So you want to take a little time, play around with these tridents, get a feel for how they work. Now, like I mentioned earlier, as I move my cursor around the object, it highlights all these different parts of the bounding box. Well, these also allow you to move the object. You can go ahead and grab the different tridents, but if for some reason these tridents are difficult to access, maybe they're a little small. Again, I'm using my shift key and dragging to make it smaller. Or sometimes you just can't get it on the right angle. Well, when I move my cursor, and it highlights an edge of the bounding box. When I click and drag, it drags along that axis. So if I wanted to do the Y axis, I could grab the tip of the trident here, or I can just grab the top of the bounding box, and that will do the Y axis. If I wanted to do the Z, I can just grab the bounding box over here and drag that. That does the Z axis as well. And the same for the X. If I go to the corner of the bounding box, it'll highlight, oops, if I get it right on the corner, that will allow me to rotate the box. So depending on which um, intersection here I drag, it will rotate accordingly. So you can either use the tridents or you can kind of pull along the edges of the box and that will interact differently with the object as well. So definitely take a little time playing around and moving these objects in 3D space. And don't worry if it gets uh, too crazy if it gets a little, uh, you know, all cockeyed and upside down and stuff like that because we can reset everything pretty easily. I'm going to go here to my 3D layers and I'm going to click on my pyramid. It's already active, but if it, if it, for whatever reason, if it's not active, go ahead and click on it. And I'm going to go up to the properties. The way the properties are laid out, there's usually at least two options up here. There's some sort of option, some sort of icon over here that has options specific to what it is you have selected. Maybe it's a light, maybe it's a mesh, uh, maybe it's something in the scene. And then usually there's this little icon right over here. It's like a box with little dots coming over it. Those are your coordinates. And the coordinates allow you to reset the position, rotation, or scale of an object. So if I take this object and I've gone ahead and I've sort of rotated it all sorts of crazy. And I say to myself, wow, I, I wish I could just square away that rotation, put it back to where it is. I can go up here uh, under my rotation column here and hit this little arrow and that will reset my rotation coordinates. It just zeroed out all the coordinates. If I want to, if I, let's say I scaled this or I, let's say I squished it and really just deformed it really bad and I really squashed the pyramid, I can go over here, reset, and put it all to uh, put the scale all to the same value. Now it's back to proportions. If I move the object 
off the ground plane. There's a button here to move it back to the ground plane. That will put it right back on the ground plane for you. So over here you've got these options to reset your coordinates. So don't be concerned if you're spinning things and it gets a little out of control. You simply click on your mesh, in this case the pyramid. You go up to your properties, turn on the coordinates, and you can go ahead and, and reset things. Now this right here, this reset coordinates, if you click on that, that resets everything back to its default. But if you just want to reset certain columns, certain settings, you can go ahead and just hit these arrows down here. One last thing before I wrap up this video. If you go to your layers palette, and your 3D layer is active, you'll see all the grid work and all the tridents and all the stuff that's needed to navigate through 3D space. If you just deselect this layer, uh, you can either click on another layer that you might have, or in this case I don't have another layer. So I'm just going to go down here into the gray part of my layers palette and click. When I deselect that layer, you'll notice all the uh, grid work and all the 3D interface uh, goes away. When I click back onto this pyramid layer, it all comes back. So I'm going to wrap up this little section of the video now. And I feel like you need to get really comfortable uh, navigating objects through 3D space before you uh, continue on to uh, any other steps there. So take a little bit of time and play around with some meshes. There's a bunch of stuff up here. If, again, if you go under 3D, new mesh from layer, there's a bunch of simple presets uh, that you can play around with.